Hello and welcome to another episode of the Book Baby Spotlight Podcast, your home for conversations with illustrators, editors, and other industry insiders from the world of self-publishing. I'm your host, Sam Sedan, joined as always by our producer, Chad Henson. Hey guys, I'm happy to be here. Uh, Chad, we're starting today with a trivia question, courtesy of Jeopardy. A 1951 Time article said, since the war, this two-word term for a period of time has been written into union contracts. I'm going to go out on a limb and say coffee break. Way to read the notes before the podcast starts. I like it. Thanks for being prepared. Uh, so it turns out the uh, Sanker Sanct coffee break is a fairly new concept uh, as work has evolved. And shout out to Nikhil Saval and the book Cubed for some of this info. Uh, so has our coffee drinking habits. Uh, experiments showed an uptick in alertness and productivity for workers after having consumed coffee. Uh, so when different industries were reaching deep to churn out products of war, the coffee break started being standardized. And as mentioned, contractually protected. Interesting. I did some research of my own and found that coffee has the ability to make you more creative and thus make you a better writer by helping you overcome the three barriers that kill creativity, which are initiative, commitment, and self-doubt. So on the days when you just don't feel like writing, coffee can help jumpstart your brain. It also blocks the part of the brain that tells your body you're tired so you can push past fatigue. And because it develops initiative and commitment, drinking coffee before work is often linked to higher self-confidence due to getting more things done. And Sam, I know this month we interviewed an expert on the topic, so why don't you tell us a little bit about our guest? Yeah, sounds like coffee really is the writer's best friend here. And uh to join us is going to be Sanjeev Chopra. Uh, he is a doctor, a best-selling author, a motivational speaker, a professor at Harvard Medical School, and his new book is about the humble cup of joe. He's publishing with Book Baby right now and is just about done. I asked Dr. Chopra how many cups of coffee it took him to write this book. So I wrote this book in about four months, and I wrote every day. So if that's 120 days and I have four cups every day, then we're talking about 480 cups of Java. I bet right. you didn't expect this was going to start with a math problem, did you? <laughs> no, but I'm pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So coffee is pretty ubiquitous, uh, but, but where did you get it start? So, you know, coffee right now, there are 2.3 billion cups of coffee consumed every day. It's number one beverage. And uh, many other companies, not only, you know, we know of Starbucks and Beats and we know of uh, Costa in Europe and uh, Cafe Nero. There's so many different coffee companies, but Coca-Cola has seen the writing on the wall. And they have bought this chain called Costa, which is in all the European airports. When you go there, you'll see Costa, Costa for something mm -hmm. like $5.3 billion. And Pepsi is coming up with a coffee infused drink. But coffee originated in Ethiopia. There was a small village called Kafa, hence the term coffee. And there was a shepherd by the name of Kaldi, and he would take his sheep to pasture. And he noticed in one particular pasture, they were very frisky and animated. They were consuming these red berries. So he made a brew out of it. He really enjoyed it. There was a monastery nearby, and a monk used to walk by in the evening. And he looked at Kaldi, and he scolded him. He said, Kaldi, you have partaken of the devil's fruit. Kaldi ignored him. After a while, the punk said, let me try it. And he's able to stay up for the late night prayers. It then spread to Mysore, India, and then to South America. But even something like 700 years ago, a group of well-meaning people petitioned Pope Vincent III and said, this is truly the devil's drink, and you need to ban it. And the Pope wisely said, before I ban it, let me taste it. And when he tasted it, he instead baptized it. <laughs> Coffee is so good, the infidels should not have exclusive use of it. <laughs> so it could have been a whole different world if he hadn't yeah. liked coffee. Thank you, Pope Vincent. <laughs> That's crazy. I had no idea that you could trace it back to a single individual who yeah. uh, came That's up with this thing. idea. Yeah. Wow. So was all the opposition to coffee just based on morals? Like they thought it... Doing yeah, wrong? people thought it would make you angry and it would make you gamble and mm -hmm. do things like that. Women petitioned about it. and uh, But, you know, even philosophers like Voltaire understood the merits of coffee. And you'll be shocked and the readers, the audience will be shocked to hear how many cups of coffee he drank a day. 
Voltaire lived to the ripe old age of 83 when life expectancy was in the 40s. And it's not proof he lived that long because he drank a lot of coffee, but he drank 50 to 72 cups of coffee a day. But what I recommend is drink two to four cups of regular coffee a day. Regular coffee has much more health benefits than decaf. It's not the caffeine. And um, if you want to drink it with milk or cream or sugar, that's fine. I drink it black, make it easy. But there's a study from Europe published in the Annals of Internal Medicine a few years ago, one of the premier medical journals, 10 European countries, more than half a million subjects. In these European countries, they make the coffee differently. They drink it differently. Everyone, men and women, had lower total and cause-specific mortality. You live longer if you drink coffee. The only thing I tell my friends and colleagues and students and patients is do not put artificial sweeteners. That changes the gut microbiome. The gut microbiome is 100 trillion bacteria in our gut. It's been called the second human genome, the inner bacterial rainforest, a newly discovered organ. It has implications in obesity, diabetes, arthritis, liver disease, autism, on and on, even longevity. And if you, if you put artificial sweeteners, you actually raise your blood sugar. You change the gut microbiome. So drink it the way you like it. You want to simplify your life, drink it black. After two weeks, you will not miss the milk or the sugar. You know, Sam, if you went to your primary care doctor tomorrow and said, I heard this guy, he said, coffee is very good for you. He or she will likely say everything in moderation. Mm -hmm. These studies come and go. Hello, the studies for coffee have not been coming and going. They've been coming and coming and coming. And uh, coffee lowers the risk of cirrhosis of the liver, lowers the risk of type 2 diabetes, cognitive decline, Alzheimer's, Parkinsonism, gout, dental cavities, lower risk of seven cancers. Can you believe that? If you drink coffee, you have a lower risk of head and neck cancer, breast cancer, uterine cancer, colon cancer, metastatic prostate cancer, liver cancer, and skin cancer, including malignant melanoma. Liver cancer is the third leading cause of cancer mortality in the world. And in, three, in 11 countries, including Egypt and Mongolia, it's number one cause of cancer death. And if you drink two cups of coffee a day, 40% reduction, huge. And the most recent study, which blew my mind, and sent to me by a tenured professor of medicine at Harvard Medical School, a good friend of mine, Dr. Noel Schnipper, used to be our chief of hematology oncology at the Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center. Sanjay, you've probably already seen this study, but in case you haven't, published in JAMA Oncology, Journal of the American Medical Association Oncology, individuals with metastatic and advanced colon cancer. In other words, they have colon cancer and it's already spread spread to the liver, the lungs, the bones, mm -hmm. lymph nodes, who drink coffee, have improved disease-free survival. What? And it was seen here with both regular and decaf coffee. And it was dose-dependent, which always adds validity. That meaning that if you drink two cups, you're better off than drinking one cup. If you drink three cups, you're better off than drinking two. What I recommend is two to four cups. That's a good, healthy amount of regular coffee to be drinking. Now, I personally cannot drink it after four o'clock, but by then I've had my four cups because if I drink coffee after four o'clock, I'd be wired up and be awake till mm -hmm. three, four in the morning. So would that be the main uh, negative health consequence from drinking too much coffee is uh, caffeine intake? Yeah, yeah. I think the caffeine, if you drank, you know, five, six, seven, eight, ten 10 cups of coffee a day, you could get the jitters, you could get the tremors, you could have insomnia, you could raise your blood pressure, you could worsen your gastroesophageal reflux, heartburn. Those are very, you know, they're significant side effects, but the benefits with two to four cups without any of these happening are so huge. So people worry about blood pressure. You know, it turns out if you drink a regular cup of coffee, your blood pressure may go up by two millimeters, but you develop tolerance. It's a physiological phenomenon. So if you keep drinking after a month or so, you will not raise your blood pressure. People are concerned, oh, I might get palpitations. There's a very common cardiac arrhythmia called atrial fibrillation. And if you don't treat it, 
it leads, can lead to stroke. There are now two studies, one recently saying that coffee, people who drink coffee have a lower risk of cardiac arrhythmias, including atrial fibrillation. Pretty amazing. And yeah. now these studies have been sponsored by Starbucks, right? <laughs> they published yeah. in peer-reviewed journals. People review it, editorial board. They look at the science. When the first study came out in the New England Journal of Medicine, saying people who drink coffee have low mortality, the editorial board were actually deliberated it, said, should we publish it? And then they mm. said, it's incontrovertible proof. I mean, the, the study is so well designed and it relates to health. I, it's coffee. It's not a drug. It's not an exercise. But yes, we're going to recommend. It. And it was published. Yeah, that was going to be my next question. This all sounds a bit too good to be true. Uh, yeah. So what would you say to people who ask why they should listen to you? How, how do you uh, go about establishing your own credibility? Yeah, I, I, I say, look at the science, right? If, if you, for example, are concerned about getting the COVID vaccine, look at the science. Don't listen to people. Don't listen to the head of the NIH. Look at the science. We need a vaccine for unfounded fears. I have a saying, Schopenhauer, the German philosopher, once said, all truth goes through three phases. First, it is ridiculed. Second, it is violently opposed. Third, it is accepted as being self-evident. We always knew this, right? It takes a while for things to percolate. That's part of the reason I've written this book. Because even my physician friends are not necessarily aware of all the health benefits. And negative news sticks. Mm -hmm. We know that right? Negativity is much more powerful and sticks. So there was an article in the New England Journal of Medicine some 20 years ago that people who drink coffee have a higher risk of pancreatic cancer. That's a pretty deadly cancer. Then it was rebutted in the next six months with multiple articles. But a lot of my physician colleagues don't remember the other articles. They remember that one. They say, suddenly, wasn't there some kind of a link to pancreatic cancer? I say, no, 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 no. It was rebutted in the same journal in six studies and coffee drinkers live longer and here are five studies. So you have to do that. You have to do it with science and you have to do it with a clever quote like Schopenhauer. So this is not your first book, correct? Uh, I've written 10 books free previously. Okay. But it is your first book with Book Baby. Uh, so why why are you publishing with Book Baby as opposed to a traditional publisher? You know, the, the research on coffee keeps coming so fast that if I went through a literary agent and a publisher, it might take a year or longer for the book to get published. And I wanted this to get out there. So I looked up and I looked at Book Baby and I looked at how many books they published and some of the authors. And I said, you know what? I'm going to go with Book Baby. And I'm, I'm on the verge now. I think we're almost done. You have to refine a few more things and probably be on Amazon in four to six weeks. Yeah, so you had some proofs out for your approval, getting ready to yeah, uh, finish went, that up. Yeah. So yeah. How, how has your experience been, uh, especially compared to traditional publishers? It's been faster and it's been good. Uh, the Book Baby people who connect with me are very organized. And um, if I have to do six things, they tell they spell it out. One, two, three, four, five, six. So it's good. I like it. They're very thorough and it's been a good experience. I would recommend it. You know, you, you'll be surprised to hear, maybe coffee was part of the reason, but with COVID and lockdown, the previous year in 2019, I'd been in 10 countries speaking and some tourism. And then COVID hits and, you know, I'd been to three countries before it hit. But all my conferences, my keynotes, many, many things are canceled. My teaching at Harvard Medical School with the interns, residents by Zoom. So it's saving tons of time. And I need to be busy. So I finished the coffee book. That was the first thing. And then I wrote three other books. Oh, wow. You've been busy. In one year. In one year. And now I'm writing a fifth book. So in, in a year and a half, I will have finished five books. And I, I attribute it to Zoom and Starleaf and connecting with colleagues and being able to look up stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'll probably publish another one or two through Book Baby. 
That's what we like to hear. So ha- have you thought at all about marketing yet? I mean, this seems like a book with some yeah, good broad yeah. appeal. Everyone likes coffee. Yeah, you know, I, I know uh, some people in the coffee business, so I'm going to uh, send them copies of the book when they come out. Uh, I know somebody personally who is very well connected to Howard Schultz, CEO of Starbucks, so he'll get a copy of the book. Uh, I'm on social media. I have close to 20,000 followers on Facebook, uh, sorry, on Twitter, and 5,000 on Facebook. And my brother, Deepak Chopra, is very famous. He's published more than 90 books, 21 New York Times bestseller. He and I wrote a bestseller together. It's a sort of dual autobiography called Brotherhood, Dharma, Destiny, and the American Dream. He has written the foreword for the coffee book. Amazing the way he's written it. Mm -hmm. And he has like 4 million people following him. So I said, Deepak, put it on Facebook or promote my book. Yeah. That'd be huge. Yeah. So have you thought at all about how you're going to convert your existing fans or your brother's existing uh, followers into buyers of this book other than just post? Do you you have any other plans? Yeah, I don't know at the moment uh, of other plans. It's possible that a coffee company would buy a bunch of these books. And if you buy a certain amount of our coffee, we'll also send you an autographed copy of Sanjay's book, The Magical Elixir. Uh, That's a possibility. And I understand you're also a motivational speaker. Are you going to sell this book at events? I mean, do you have any events coming up? I know it's been difficult. I I give talks and then the people who organize my talks often to 3,000, 6,000, 7,000 clinicians, mostly doctors, but nurses, nurse practitioners, PAs, pharmacists, students. Um, They always arrange for a book signing in the exhibit hall. And a book vendor has all my books there. And if there's a new book, sometimes 300, 400, 500 people buy the book or order the book. So, and then I have these book plates. So I, you know, I sign them. And then when they get the book, they can attach it to the book. So it says, Sam, wishing you the best in life, Sanjay. I'm cool. very happy. Cool. So I do that a lot, yeah. I noticed you had a lot of endorsements as well, uh, along with your brother's forward. How did you go about procuring those? Are, are those all people you know? Or? Those are mostly people I know over the years. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm blessed to have these most amazing colleagues at Harvard Medical School, but also at UCLA, Johns Hopkins, and many others. Many of them are authors or publishers or professors of medicine. And when they see the science and the, what I'm saying in the book, and they say, oh, boy, this is absolutely true. This is a wonderful book. I don't even remember what they said, but wonderful endorsements. Yeah, just in our, one of our recent uh, podcasts, we were talking about how authors uh, need to be spending their time promoting other books so that there's always a give and take with these authors and, and that they're then going to be you know, motivated to go talk about how awesome your book is. Uh, so have yeah, you found that to be the case? Yeah, 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 Sam, that's a great point. If I read a good book, I then quickly order five, six, ten copies of that book. Friends invite you for dinner. You know how traditionally we take flowers or a bottle of wine? I still do that, but I also take one of these books or I take one of my books if they haven't read it and I autograph it and I promote other people. You know, it's it's a wonderful thing to do. And, and uh, I talk about reading a lot. I, I put on Facebook maybe a year ago, people who do not read have no advantage over people who cannot read. Mm. And a good friend of mine, a very, very successful businessman, called me and said, Sanjeev, I used to read a book once a week. Last two, three years, I haven't read a book. You've chagrined me. I'm going to read a book every week. I think we need to encourage people to read books. There's so many amazing books out there. Uh, one of my favorite recent books, <clears throat> it's, it's not recent, meaning I read it recently, like three years ago. It's called The Four Agreements by Miguel Ruiz. And it's based on ancient Toltec wisdom. And his book, I think, has sold like translated into 50 languages, sold 10 million copies. He's been on Oprah Winfrey twice. The current paperback version 
on the front cover, it's endorsed by my brother, Deepak Chopra. I can't get rid of him. <laughs> but a story about coffee and him at the end of this. So what he says, the four agreements we make with ourselves. Number one, always be impeccable with your word. Number two, don't take things personally. Number three, don't be judgmental. And number four, always do your best. You know, I'd become cocky. I give these keynotes on leadership and happiness and living with purpose. My last book, Two Most Important Days, How to Find Your Purpose, Live a Happy and Healthier Life, is all about that, finding your purpose and being happy. And I, because it tugs at the heart with storytelling, right? Steve Jobs once said, most powerful people in the world are storytellers. I get a resounding reception. Standing ovation. People are crying. And I got cocky about it. I would go to the AV guy at the uh, conference center like 20 minutes before my talk, flip through my slides, go, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I'm all set. I read this book and it's always do your best. Really? Are you doing your best? No. Can you improve a story? Can you improve a slide? Can you bring in another story? Now I spend a week or a few days before, I spend an hour going through every single slide. How can I change it? How can I modify it? It's an amazing little book. I recommend it heartily. The four agreements we make with ourselves. Some inspirational words to end on there. If you want to learn more about coffee, check out Dr. Sanjeev Chopra's book due out this fall. You can also check out his upcoming events with PriMed, that's P-R-I-M-E-D, and his site, sanjeevchopra.com. And in the meantime, drink coffee to stay healthy and write your books, though maybe not as much as Voltaire. Yeah, that's insane. So no 70 cups for you? How, how do you drink your coffee? Yeah, I've always loved a good caramel iced coffee. How about yourself? I dig the iced coffee as well. The cafe right around the corner just shut down. I'm hoping that they're going to be open when uh, school starts in the fall. But you, you got any book recommendations for us today? Yeah, I just picked up a book called Maximize Your Potential, which is a guidebook by 99U to help creatives build incredible careers, supercharge their work, and make their ideas happen. How about it's you? 99U. 99U is a, um, it's like a creative careers part of Adobe. So the same Adobe Premiere Photoshop that we use, um, they have like a creative career oriented section of their brand. So there's training on all their software and stuff? Yeah. So they do events. They, they make books. They also do trainings and creative consulting. All right. Check out 99U. Uh, so I'm reading The Age of Precarity by Dario Gentley right now, but I also wanted to shout out Philly-based author Terry Lee Barrett. He has a really cool novelized screenplay out with Book Baby Now called Kata, The Iron Thorn. He's been doing some events around the city related to Jamaican Independence Day earlier this month. I'm excited to see what comes next from him. Yeah, I'll check it out. Excellent. So I think that's a good place to wrap it up. Thanks again to Dr. Sanjeev Chopra for taking the time to talk to us. Check out his book, Coffee, The Magic Elixir, out this fall from Book Baby. If you're all fueled up on coffee and ready to publish your book, our staff is standing by to help. Info at bookbaby.com or 877-961-6878. Open 9 a.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern. And don't forget to like, subscribe, follow, recommend to a friend to help the Book Baby Spotlight reach more listeners. And until next time, stay safe, everyone.